we start? Yes, sir. Okay. So today we, I will be discussing about pulmonary edema. You know what is pulmonary edema? What is pulmonary edema? Accumulation of fluid in the in the alveoli. Okay. Normally alveoli contains air. Okay. If you see the alveoli, it will be like this. This is your alveoli. Alveoli is a functional unit of your lung. Okay. Normally it contains air. That oxygen will be diffused to your blood. Okay. But here if it is full of water, suppose it is full of water, what will happen? Air will not come inside. Okay. So that is pulmonary edema. What are the causes for pulmonary edema? Pulmonary edema, commonly what we are seeing in emergency room is due to cardiac failure, heart failure. Heart failure is the most important cause for pulmonary edema. Other than that, patient can have fluid overload due to any condition. Fluid overload due to can be due to renal failure. That is the next common condition. Anemia, thyrotoxicosis, very, very, so many conditions. Water can increase in our body. Okay. So, you understood what is pulmonary edema? Okay. Now, you can see here, when the pulmonary edema is there, like in your lungs, normally you can see here, so air comes inside, this, this is the alveoli. Air can easily go, oxygen can go inside the uh, blood and carbon dioxide will go out from the blood. CO2 will go to the alveoli and that CO2 will go out. Okay, that is your normal mechanism. But here you can see full of water, all this alveoli contains water. Okay. So what happened to the diffusion? Diffusion will reduce. Okay. So oxygen will not be absorbed into your blood. Okay. You are able to breathe, but oxygen is not coming inside the alveoli and not going to the blood. So what will happen? If you are seeing the patient, saturation will be very low. Okay. Now, one of the most important cause for pulmonary edema is left ventricular failure. What is left ventricular failure? You have, you know that you have heart like this. This is the left ventricle, left ventricle. From left ventricle, blood will pump to the aorta. Okay, that you know, blood will pump from the left ventricle to the aorta. Suppose this ventricle is failed, what will happen? Water will accumulate in the left ventricle. The pressure will increase in the left atrium. Okay. So, more water will accumulate in the left ventricle. That pressure will go to the left atrium. From there, from where left atrium getting blood? It is from the pulmonary circulation. So, pulmonary circulation also pressure will increase. So, water is not going out or blood is not going out from the left ventricle. That pressure will increase in the left atrium. That pressure will increase the pulmonary circulation pressure. Okay. So, what happens is, now in alveoli, sorry, in alveoli, you have a lot of water. Okay. Water or fluid. So, diffusion will not occur. Oxygen will not go to the blood. So, patient develops hypoxemia. Okay. That much you understood? Okay. Now, we will see what are the triggers of pulmonary edema. Triggers means somebody will have a chronic heart failure. A patient will have a chronic heart failure. Some condition in them can produce acute failure. Okay. One of the important causes is infection. You have seen that patient coming with infection to emergency room with breath breathlessness. Already heart failure is there. Suddenly patient develops some fever, viral fever or something. And that they develop breathlessness. Why they develop, develop pulmonary edema during that period? Because of the heart rate. Okay. So normally you can see the heart rate here. This is a QRS complex. Okay. So rate is maybe around 70 in a person and suddenly during fever what happens to the heart rate heart rate increases okay when the heart rate increases what will happen to the ventricular volume normally ventricle pumps like this okay you give more time more expansion more pumping if it is pumping like this pumping like this no expansion so no pumping okay so when the heart rate increases pumping actually come down okay that aggravates the problem here. Okay. One of the reason is increased heart rate. Second reason is when you have infection, your metabolic activity increases. You need more blood for circulation. That also can produce. Other than that, lot of other causes. Again, thyrotoxicosis, heart rate, what will happen? You have seen hyperthyroidism, patient with hyperthyroidism. What happened to the heart rate? Heart rate increases. 
Bury, bury. These all are fluid overloaded condition. They are all heart rate increases, cardiac failure occurs. Then cardiac arrhythmias. If the patient develops atrial fibrillation, supraventricular tachycardia, heart rate increases. Again, same problem. Okay. Suddenly, patient can go to a failure. Salt and fluid intake increase. That also can produce more water intake, more fluid in the body, more failure. Okay. Stress, surgery, trauma, and all. Then. Steroids also, they retain water. Steroid and NSI retain water. So, more fluid overload in the body. Okay. So, these are the common causes. And some drugs like calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers normally reduces the contraction of the ventricle. Calcium is required for the contraction of the ventricle. If you block the calcium channel, calcium is not there in the uh, uh, in the heart and contraction will come down okay so calcium channel blocker you, can you tell some calcium channel blockers where a family deltia some uh, all these things okay it is written here beta blockers also initially it will produce cardiac failure but you can see afterwards beta blockers are used in cardiac failure okay that you will see afterwards now anybody coming any patient coming to emergency room with cardiac failure you have to see the symptoms and signs symptom means patient is telling uh, to the doctor i have these problems sign is what we are eliciting in the clinical examination so patient will have weakness exercise intolerance dyspnea on exertion orthopnea means patient is lying down and patient is getting breathlessness that is orthopnea pnd is Patient lying down after some time, patient is getting breathlessness. That is because from the peripheral circulation during night time, fluid will shift to the intravascular compartment. So a failing heart cannot take up that much fluid. Okay, that is the reason for orthopnea PND. Syncope is we have already seen that pumping is compromised from the left ventricle. Pumping is compromised; it is reduced. So there is inadequate blood supply to the brain that produces syncope. Palpitation is again because of volume overload, chest pain also can be that. So these are the symptoms. On examination, what you are seeing normally, patient have uh, leg edema, pedal edema, edema on the legs. Then you can get ascites, abdominal edema. JVP is a vein here. You can see here when you are examining the patient, you have seen a vein over neck which is distended. So that will be elevated. These are clinical signs, hepatic congestion, hepatosplenomegaly, pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema, how do you detect in clinically? When you are auscultating, you might have heard about crepitations. Crepitations, when you are auscultating on the lungs, you can get that sound, crack, crack sound. Okay. So that sound you can hear when the patient is coming with breathlessness, especially on the back, posterior aspect of the lung. Okay. So crepitations are classical features. So if somebody asks you what is the most important clinical finding of pulmonary edema. What is the most important finding? Bilateral basal crepitation. Basal means lower part of the lungs. Bilateral basal crepitations. Okay. Now, this will be the typical finding. So, you can see here uh, some of the things I will tell you. Patient led dyspnea, orthopnea, chest crepitation, wheeze. Okay. We, weak pulse. If you see the pulse, it will be weak. Okay. Urine output is reduced. Why urine output is reduced? Heart has to pump more to reach this uh, blood to the kidney. If the blood is not reaching to the kidney, there is no urine output. So that is very important. If heart is not pumping, blood will not reach to the kidney. So urine output will be reduced. Okay. So this, uh, this, this all these findings you can see in many patients, but I am not telling all these findings. Very important finding is patient is having breathlessness, bilateral basal crepitation, urine output is very much reduced, weak pulse and BP will be very low. Okay, so these are the classical finding you get in patients who is having cardiac failure. Okay, you might have seen cardiac failure patients in emergency room. They have severe breathlessness, hypoxemia will be there and ascites will be there, pedal edema will be there, you auscultate bilateral extensive crepitations will be there. So they will not be able to lie down. Why they are not able to lie down? Because when we are lying down, all the blood from the periphery will go to the heart. The heart cannot take up that much blood. Okay. So another term you should understand is scape. What is scape? Sympathetic crushing acute pulmonary edema. You might have seen flash, flash pulmonary edema in emergency room. 
patient suddenly come with severe breathlessness till now patient was normal suddenly he develops severe breathlessness that is called as flash pulmonary edema or scape okay here there is a sympathetic surge in that patient due to various reason we don't know what is the reason it can be anxiety fear or stress or due to some withdrawal of drugs so many reasons are there but suddenly sympathetic means which are which are hormones you know in sympathetic uh, system adrenaline noradrenaline all these things we use in our clinical practice same adrenaline or suppose you you get uh, like frightened somebody you see some uh, bad scene what will happen to your adrenaline adrenaline will be surged okay it will be released suppose this person is already having heart failure and there is an overdrive of adrenaline secretion what happens to his uh, metabolic activities all metabolic activity increases and his heart rate will be very fast okay so what we have seen previously when the when the metabolic activity is increased or if there is a tachycardia patient go to pulmonary edema okay so here the problem is inside the body adrenaline surge will occur due to various reasons and suddenly that will produce pulmonary edema this is called as flash pulmonary edema or the new name is sympathetic crushing acute pulmonary edema okay so you can see here venoconstriction is the most important problem here venoconstriction means it can be produced by adrenaline noradrenaline which all are secreted in our body whenever there is a problem stress all these hormones will be sec secreted and it can increase your heart rate it can increase the uh, like con uh, blood vessel can get constricted so all these things can produce sympathetic overdrive and that produces pulmonary edema this is called as flash pulmonary edema or you can remember the name scape okay so understood that so due to some reason your adrenaline secretion is increased that increased adrenaline can produce something like hyperthyroidism or fever patient develops pulmonary edema that's all okay so whatever you are seeing in emergency room is most of the cases are coming under this category scape okay they suddenly come with severe breathlessness if you see the reason they might have missed the tab that you they might have uh, had a severe stressful condition in the recent past something like that okay so they can have uh, features are same but they all are rapid okay whatever features you have seen in the uh, pulmonary edema that everything occurs suddenly within minutes it occurs so they have to rush to the hospital uh, due, due to that acute problem okay so you understood what is scape okay so pulmonary edema means it's a chronic process patient can have chronic pulmonary edema if somebody coming suddenly with pulmonary edema to hospital that comes under this category scape so most of the cases coming to emergency room will be in the in this category scape category okay now triggers can be one of the important trigger is non adherence of anti hypertensive okay suppose the patient is on beta blocker for a long time okay what is the action of beta blocker that re reduces your adrenaline drive okay so it's an anti adrenergic drug okay beta blocker means it's an anti adrenergic drug what happens to the heart rate heart rate reduces okay suddenly you are withdrawing beta blocker a patient is admitted in your icu unfortunately you have not given your uh, beta blocker what happens heart rate suddenly increases reflex tachycardia this is called as reflex tachycardia and what happens to the bp bp increases okay when bp increases in a failing heart peripheral there is peripheral uh, vasodilatation occurs due to your anti hypertensive peripheral blood vessels are dilated that is because of your drugs suddenly you are withdrawing this drug what happens to the peripheral blood vessel that they, they constrict and a failing heart cannot pump against this constricted blood vessel so what happens failing increases failure increases okay so that scape one of the most important causes anti hypertensive not taken volume overload that is mostly because of misdialysis so many patients in emergency room they come with they might have missed the previous dialysis that's why they come to emergency room so that also comes under this category then sympathomimetic intoxication many drugs recreational drugs can produce sympathomimetic activity we are not going to that now if they take that okay amphetamine all these things if they take that they go to pulmonary edema withdrawal from clonidine that's an anti hypertensive acute myocardial infarction exertion anxiety all these things also can produce 
escape okay so you understood no the most important two reasons in emergency room is one is they have not taken their tablet second one is they have missed their dialysis these are the two important reasons now escape is slightly different from fosp okay fosp is the same thing what we have discussed earlier volume overload fosp is fluid overload this is sympathetic crushing acute pulmonary edema both are slightly different one is patient has taken more water or water retention has occurred other one is sympathetic activities increased okay so there is a slight difference but treatment wise there is no much no much difference the, if there is a volume overload you remove the volume and give some drugs same like uh, uh, scape that you will see afterwards but in scape you have to dilate the blood vessels you have to use uh, drugs that we will see afterwards okay now what are the investigation we do in emergency room we always take a hemoglobin level why hemoglobin because anemia is one important condition which can aggravate the cardiac failure thyroid function test hyperthyroidism can produce cardiac failure okay electrolytes we always take uh, normal electrolytes uh, in any patient with cardiac failure then creatinine why creatinine because you want to know whether the patient is in renal failure or not so these are the basic investigation and they we may take a ecg also ecg what you are seeing you see whether the patient is having tachycardia atrial fibrillation supraventricular tachycardia st depression st elevation all these things we have to make out from ec so only basic investigation will be done in this case okay so what is this x-ray x-ray shows this is the heart you can see here this is your heart okay what is this white shadows both sides like bat wing appearance you know what is bat no bat wing okay so this is your heart this white color is your heart surrounding area is your lens in that white color is there white color what is this that is fluid inside heart you are you have you have blood that's why it is white in color okay outside heart this is lung normally lung will be black in color why black in color because that contains air okay but here white in color why it is white in color it is fluid okay so bilateral ac haziness is seen in uh, x-ray of patients with pulmonary edema okay so x-ray is a must now ultrasound also can be used you might have seen doctors are using ultrasound to detect pulmonary edema pneumothorax all these things in emergency room there are some lines you can see here these lines are there no your white lines you are seeing okay this is a plural line this is the white line which is which is known as b lines okay so ultrasound is done for to detect b lines in pulmonary edema okay remember because breathlessness can be due to copd asthma pulmonary edema ild so many reasons you can get breathlessness but a doctor in emergency room we he will not be able to send the patient for x-ray if the x-ray room is in a distant place will not be able to send so if then there is an ultrasound machine available that we can easily see that whether b lines are there or not okay immediately you can give lasix and uh, save the patient understood no so ultrasound shows b line in pulmonary edema okay so this is b line there are different different uh, conditions you get different thing but i am not explaining all these things pulmonary edema shows b lines okay large number of b lines can be there in lungs okay so what is the important finding in pulmonary edema in ultrasound that is b line x-ray shows bilateral homogeneous non homogeneous opacities like a bat wing appearance okay so these are the two important investigation you do another investigation you might have seen we have a point of care equipment in our emergency room we do bnp okay what is bnp brain type natriuretic uh, peptide okay whenever ventricular failure occurs this bnp will be released so bnp will be released in cardiac failure okay patient can come with various reasons for breathlessness with he can have cardiac failure he can have asthma he can have copd but we don't know what it is suppose diagnosis is not clear we do bnp if bnp is elevated then it is cardiac failure so three important investigation we have seen one is x-ray other one is usg third one is bnp okay so bnp should not be done in a patient who is having copd you know that already copd is there 
no need to do bnp okay if you have doubt a patient who is having a heart failure with copd coming with breathlessness we want to know what is the reason in that condition we can see bnp because bnp is a costly investigation so if you have doubt you do bnp suppose you have you are not able to diagnose we do bnp otherwise bnp routinely not done but bnp will be elevated in cardiac failure okay now other investigation we already uh, told that ecg is a must ecg will tell whether tachycardia is there whether st depression is there st elevation is there electrolyte imbalance so many things you can make out and another important investigation is the echo okay echo can be done in emergency room we can see the ejection fraction in that patient any valvular disorder all these things we can see okay now when the patient come to emergency room what should be the position any patient coming to emergency room they have to be in this position this is called as propped up position okay propped up position what is the advantage when you are sitting up okay we have a cardiac table you might have seen cardiac table normally patient has to keep his hand and lean forward so that the posterior part of your uh, our chest will be released most of our lung is in the posterior part so it can easily expand okay so all patients should be in this position the propped up position then we can start oxygen but most of the patient require niv what is niv non invasive what is the action of this so this is your lungs lot of fluid is there here you are giving simple oxygen through a mask what happens oxygen will go but it will not be able to enter to this fluid okay but in in niv what you are doing you are setting a respiratory inspiratory pressure and expiratory pressure okay so air will be forcefully sending to this al alveoli we are sending air forcefully to this <coughs> alveoli so what happens the fluid will be slowly slowly what happens it go out fluid will go out okay from here fluid will go out okay so air will come inside so diffusion can occur very easily okay so that is advantage of keeping niv in a patient with breathlessness so any patient with breathlessness the treatment of choice is niv if the patient is unconscious don't keep the patient on niv if the patient is saying pneumothorax don't keep the patient on niv other than that most of the breathlessness you can keep the patient on niv patient with asthma we can keep patient with copd we can keep patient with cardiac failure we can keep patient with ild we can keep so all condition we can start on niv okay now opioids most of these patients will be highly agitated you might have seen in emergency room patient will with hypoxemia will be highly agitated shouting at everyone eh? so what you do you give some small sedation you can give either morphine or fentanyl whatever it is available so small dose of morphine or fentanyl will calm down the patient okay they will be highly agitated when you are agitated what will happen to your sympathetic drive that will be increased so to reduce that sympathetic drive you can give small dose of morphine or fentanyl okay but not in all patients if they are agitated only you give okay if you are if their anxiety anxiety is very high high level then you give otherwise don't give okay now normally in pulmonary edema we don't prescribe ntg you, you might have seen many patients we don't give pulmonary edema we give lasix and most of the patient settles with that but in flash pulmonary edema we have to give ntg what is the action of ntg that dilates the peripheral blood vessels okay so heart has to pump see this is your heart heart has to pump to the blood vessel it has to pump to the aorta then that will go to the small small blood vessels if your blood vessels are very narrow okay if it is narrow what happens heart has to pump against that high pressure area okay so that should be avoided so just dilate the blood vessel heart can easily pump to that dilated area okay so that's why in scape one of the important drug of drug of choice is ntg but you don't see in many patients with the pulmonary edema we don't start but if the patient is not improving then better to start the patient on ntg especially patients bp is slightly higher you give ntg suddenly the blood vessels will dilate heart can easily pump into that area okay so that is an important drug you should remember other drugs what you are giving normally in icu we give lasix normal dose of lasix will be 80 40 to 80 mg we give as a iv push what is iv push you take 80 mg suddenly you give okay 
whereas you can give infusion infusion can take many hours okay that will not reduce the bp that will not remove the that may remove the fluid of, over a period okay immediately if you want to give effect then you give iv lasix as a push okay then potassium sparing agent spironolactone that is also very important we will not go to the details of the opd based drugs here we are only treating in emergency room so we have put the patient on a proper position we have started on niv we are given lasix these are the three important things then if the patient is you are suspecting scape then we start on ntg okay then if the patient's bp is not improving we, we you might have seen we start dobutamine okay dobutamine what is the action it improves the contraction of ventricle okay so dobutamine is the most important drug other drugs like mildrenone nambrinone all these things we use you can if you want you can read about that but dobutamine is the most important drug okay now salt and water if the patient is having cardiac failure we restrict the salt if more salt is there in our body what will happen salt itself will re retain more amount of water okay so avoid salt avoid more water so in a patient with cardiac failure give only 1 liter of water in a day 1 or 2 grams of salt in a day normally we take a, up to 8 grams salt in a south indian diet but in this patient we give very minimal salt okay now ac inhibitors are the drug of choice in cardiac failure in a long term process ac inhibitors are anti hypertensives they have an action that is you can see here remodeling if somebody asking you somebody is asking you what is ventricular remodeling after myocardial infarction ventricle will dilate to prevent that you have to give ac inhibitors so they are not acute drugs they are long term pro, pro, uh, like <coughs> follow beta blockers so what you have seen previously scape is rapid heart rate produces failure so beta blockers slowly reduce the heart rate so what happens more time to pump okay so it's a long term drug so beta blockers are used to reduce the heart rate that improves the pumping over a long period okay so in emergency room we don't try this so in opd we try this drug and reduce the problem okay digoxin digoxin only one indication is cardiac failure with atrial fibrillation so you should remember that in a patient with uh, cardiac failure with atrial fibrillation digoxin may be there in that drug list okay so any doubts are there you have to ask otherwise it, we will we'll discuss it afterwards okay so cardiac failure is an important topic in emergency room and you have to manage the case without doctors help itself you have to manage how, how do you manage propped up position oxygen or niv Classics. and you should remember about scape what is scape sympathetic overdrive pulmonary edema okay what is the treatment ntg what is the action of ntg that dilates the peripheral circulation so that your bp will come down the peripheral resistance will come down heart can easily pump against that dilated blood vessels okay